So we should be live now. Okay. All right. Well, uh, welcome to the first meeting of the North Valley Municipal Advisory Council for 2021. And welcome. Uh, I'd like to call this meeting to order and lead everyone in the Pledge of Allegiance. And do we happen to have a flag yet? Ah, here we go. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the Republic, to the Republic for, which it stands, for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty, liberty and, justice, and justice, justice for all. For all. You know, I just got to say that after the events of this last week, um, you know, that flag has a little more meaning for me than it used to. Um, just say uh, it's anyway, we don't need to go into that, but, but uh, just acknowledge that, you know, there's a public servants, public services. Um, well, thanks for all your, thanks for your engagement and your time in this, in this public service. Um, so um, council member Handren is going to be a few minutes late. So um, uh, hopefully we'll see her soon. Um, and Vice Chair um, Doss, would you take the roll call, please? Absolutely, thank you. Um, Chairman Dawson? Here. Council Member Eagles? Here. Council Member Newhauser? He's on mute, I think. I can see him, but there he is. Okay, yeah. Council Member Dickey? Here. Council Member Nardo Morgan? Here. And Council Member Dowling? Here. And the one I missed was Council Member Handren that you said was on their way? Yeah. And, and did you mention? Co oh, go ahead. And Jed Cooper, Council Member Cooper. Yeah, I'm, I'm an alternate, but I'm here. You're here, yeah. <laughs> I think right. that's everyone except our uh, member Handren. All right, thanks, Vice Chair Das. And um, just to make an announcement that, um, as always, if at any time it appears this meeting's been hacked, we'll immediately terminate it and reschedule for a future date. Um, and now I'd like to ask for any corrections or additions to the minutes from last month. <clears throat> and it appears that there are none, so uh, would someone make a movement to accept the minutes, to approve the minutes for uh, from last month? So move to approve minutes. All right, and I uh, hear a second. Second. Okay, all in favor of approving the minutes from last month, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, passed. The uh, minutes from last month are approved. And now we'll move into public comment. Um, Ariel, are there uh, members of the public here? I was muted. Uh, there are some members of the public and it looks like um, Leslie Vaughn would like to make a comment. Um, one second, um, because I forgot to pull up my timer. Um, okay. So um, that'll just take me one second. Um, do you have a recommended uh, time? Yeah, I'll just, um, so uh, just as Leslie did, please uh, raise your hand <clears throat> if you wish to speak um, on matters that are not on the agenda. Um, there'll be a future time when you can comment on matters that are on the agenda. And we're limiting comments to two minutes um, at this meeting. And then uh, the council will hear all the public comments. And then after they're finished, then we will the opportunity for council members to comment on uh, the public comments. Okay, um, Leslie, uh, I think you're unmuted. So I'm gonna share my screen with the timer and I will uh, start it when you start talking. Hi, um, my two topics are the triangle and the bridge, which we've talked about the triangle previously. Like as a uh, secretary to an office, it's your impression to the neighborhood coming in to that triangle and I'd just like to see if the projects committee could get permission from the, the forum projects committee to weed whack and clear debris off that uh, around the tree at the north end in front of the fire department. Um, that's my first 
question. The second one is with regard to the lighting of the Jim Brooklyn Bridge this year, it was uh, not easy, <laughs> say the least. And um, I'd like to see that that bridge gets lit on a regular basis for the holiday season. It's not up to me clearly, but if it is done and it's not done through the SDC, a poll can be dropped. And I have a gentleman who was recommended to me from uh, Nancy Lasseter, um, uh, the groundskeeper, that would do it for free. And pg &E would have to come in and approve it and it would get a permit from this county permit from pg &E to do this. But it takes about a year, uh, 10 months to do it. And we need to get on that right away if we're gonna do alternate lighting as opposed to going through uh, running a cord to the SDC building. Uh, it would be on the north east side of the bridge. There is a pole nearby and um, yeah, that's where I left it at that. Um, so that's all I have to say. All right, thank you, Leslie. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> any other members of the public that would like to comment? I am not seeing any other hands. Okay. Um, so now any, any comments in response to Leslie uh, from the council? I just wanna emphasize that the, the bridge lights this year using um, electricity from the former Sonoma Developmental Center property won't be an option for us next year. Mm -hmm. So if we wanna do lights. Um, I've had conversations with, with Leslie about this. She's done a lot of research and, and one thing she's good at is um, finding all the ducks and getting them in a row. And so this sounds like a good solution that, um, that I, I certainly personally would, would fully support as a project. But to emphasize, I understand from Leslie that we do need to move on this within the next month or so to make sure we can be done by the holidays next year and to give enough lead time for PG&E. Thanks, Council Member Dowling. Um, can I, yes, um, Supervisor Gorin. Uh, thank you, Leslie, for both of those comments. Uh, the county actually has the easement for the triangle, the infamous triangle. I sometimes call it the Bermuda Triangle um, because it seems to just be a black hole sucking people's energy into it. Uh, and I look forward to this group uh, grappling with a future um, consideration and discussion about uh, what could happen at the triangle. The county needs it as an easement to store county um, trucks when they're doing work in Glen Ellen. So we're not anxious to give up control of the easement, but there are many things that we can do to beautify it, put up a permanent sign, welcoming folks into Glen Ellen for sure. And that's an appropriate role for the MAC to take that on and add that discussion. If you wanna weed whack there, go right ahead. I don't think the county is gonna to object to that whatsoever. And uh, we would thank you for that. Uh, one last thing that we have to do. And to keep it weed whacked, absolutely, would be great, a great help uh, for the community. Uh, working around the SDC and the Jim Birkeland Bridge, first of all, Leslie, thank you for your perseverance in the beautiful lighting project on the bridge. I think it's a welcome addition and a great entrance into uh, Glen Ellen. Always it's a challenge to work with the state around uh, the Sonoma Developmental Center. As we all know, we're navigating through a challenging community engagement process on that. Uh, let me... Um, let me bring this back to the county. We have some folks at the county who work with the Department of General Services on issues such as this. I don't know whether they would be interested in lending their support for this. I, I can't imagine why, but, but it may take some negotiation. So I made note of both of those items. Thank you, Leslie and Glen Ellen Forum and all of the folks working on uh, important issues for Glen Ellen. So let's work together. Um, full speed ahead to the MAC for this. Thank you, Supervisor Gorin. Um, I, I have a question uh, for the supervisor. Um, so, so what um, what would you recommend that the MAC does in relation to these two issues? Uh, what, like what's but, within our power and which, what would be the best approach? Well, first, let me do some prep work regarding um, the state's willingness to allow PG&E to drop a line for the lighting of the bridge, knowing that 
uh, probably the state is paying for that electricity. And we all know that they want to minimize the cost that they expend on, on <coughs> excuse me, on the campus. If you want to, <coughs> I have a tickle in my throat, I've been talking all day, sorry. Um, if you want to have uh, broadly a projects committee appointed or an ad hoc committee appointed from the forum to work on various projects throughout the year, then let me know who those individuals are and we can start talking about um, what had been worked on. Lisa Stansel worked on a potential solution and beautification project for the uh, triangle. I think we can convince her to lend us her ideas, pretty elementary in that regard, but um, it will take some community outreach and it's some planning and then community outreach to figure out the best approach. Uh, again, a sign, I, before the formation of the Glen Ellen Forum, we were working on a temporary uh, design for a sign for Glen, Glen Ellen. And I pretty much decided we needed to push that back a little bit because I needed community outreach and perhaps design capabilities to craft design at either end of Glen Ellen or maybe three ends of Glen Ellen from Warm Springs Road, the Triangle and the Jim Birkeland Bridge, welcoming folks to Glen Ellen and identifying yourself with an appropriate seal or sign. And it could be very expensive or it could be very uh, inexpensive just depending on the intricacy of the design and the cost of the materials, I think. Uh, mounting it is um, another consideration as well. But let's, if you want to focus that on as one of your priorities, then uh, it might be helpful to appoint an ad hoc committee to work on uh, this project. Uh, and it may be other projects in the future. Could that um, possibly that could come under traffic and safety, at least? Uh... It could be, or it could be, you know, it could be unrelated to traffic and safety, but right. I know that you already have um, discussed the formation of a couple of ad hocs. And so whatever is appropriate to meet your needs. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Supervisor Gorin. Any other comments? Yeah, Vice Chair Das. I just wanted to note that Council Member Handren has joined us and it, at around 540, Christina. Thank Welcome. you, Vice Chair. Thank you. And I think Council Member uh, Newhauser had his hand up. Hi, thank you. Um, yes, I, we've discussed this, the issue of the triangle briefly in the past and uh, uh, members have expressed an interest in taking this on as a project. Um, I've thought about this issue when uh, Supervisor Gorn approached me in the Sonoma Ecology Center years ago and then it was dropped, but uh, having looked at the site, there's a few things I just wanted to mention, and I, I do welcome us going into more detail uh, in the near future about this, since there's a lot of interest through the Glen Ellen Forum. Um, there's obviously the traffic issues. I look at the signage issue there. There are several traffic safety signs right there, so putting a welcome sign there uh, would add further distraction from the safety signs. Uh, there's also the issue of parking um, there on street side parking. Uh, also utility storage, like as in the giant uh, <laughs> utility pole that's been laying there for many, many months. Not sure if it's still there, but. Um, and, um, and then there's also this heritage oak that is sitting right there in the middle that has, is kind of a central feature and um, anything that we do should be done to protect that, um, really ideally respect its drip line and get it all development beyond the drip line uh, or any parking that is. And- Council Member Newhouser, could I just yeah. jump in? At, um, we've got to be careful not to get into a discussion about uh, these- Well, okay, issues. so in response uh, to Leslie's, uh, Ms. Vaughn's uh, comments, um, my only, concern immediately is that there are a few native plants that are right at the base of the oak tree. And um, I would just request that um, any weed whacking be done, uh, be focused on um, the invasive species, the annual grasses, and to not remove um, the native plants that are growing at the base of the tree. All right, thank you, Council Member Newhauser. And, and uh, <clears throat> didn't mean to, to cut you off, but I think it sounds like this is worth putting on an agenda. And uh, before we really get into the weeds, sorry, bad pun, 
but uh, you know, <laughs> put this on the agenda for another <laughs> month, and uh, it'll be publicly noticed, and then we can get uh, people uh, joining us to to talk about that and other things. All right, any other comments? Uh, response to Leslie Vaughn or the triangle? Okay, well, yeah, let's. Um, so I, let's see, uh, Ariel, do I need to, um, I don't need to pass a motion. I guess we'll, we'll, we'll put the uh, triangle as a possible agenda item for next month. We can, we, yeah, can, we, can, we can adjust that when we plan the agenda. Um, yeah. You know, there's no need for an official motion. The only thing you're yeah. doing an official motion on tonight is uh, the goals and ad hoc selection. Right, okay. All right, well, I think we can move on. Um, so now it's time for an update from our supervisor, Supervisor Gorin. Thanks, Arthur, and Happy New Year to everyone. And boy, did we start off with a bang, literally bang. I think all of us were appalled and um, maybe I was not surprised about what happened in Washington this past week because the rhetoric had been ramping up over uh, the last couple of months. And I was trying to imagine a, um, a quiet uh, transition and I wasn't, I wasn't able to imagine that. So, this is democracy in action, um, just as the Black Lives Matters protests gave us an opportunity to have uh, learning discussions and, and opportunities to really talk about the history of race relations in the United States. So too, uh, this, um, I, I call it a threat to democracy, certainly a threat to uh, peaceful transitions of, of leadership. It will take on a life of its own as it is, and it's fascinating to witness and, and have some opinions on, but always it's a learning um, opportunity for our children, especially those in school uh, studying civics. Unlike Washington, we did have a, a peaceful transition of leadership at the Board of Supervisors this past week. I gave up being chair of the Board of Supervisors after a very tumultuous year, and I, I did acknowledge counting the days till I was no longer chair, and now I regret no longer being chair because there's a lot of things happening at the board. Um, but um, uh, good news is we have an incoming chair and a vice chair, Linda Hopkins is chair, vice chair is former mayor Chris Corsi, now supervisor Chris Corsi, and uh, pro tempore is James Gore, he's in line to be become the chair of the board after the third year. So we have a rotation um, that has been in place for a while. And there may be this dis discussion about uh, the future of a rotation, but um, I, I am not necessarily in favor of a two-year chair because it produces dynamics and political overtones on a, a board that is working very well together. Normally, the day of swearing in and incoming leadership uh, changes is an opportunity for me to give a farewell address outlining all of, the all of the challenges and successes that we've had this past year and an opportunity for the incoming chair to talk about a broad agenda going forward. And overlaying all of that is what we've been dealing with with the COVID pandemic. And all of our energies have been consumed in the past nine months, probably, working through the logistics, the testing, uh, the health concerns, the threats to public health, and, um, and the impacts of COVID pandemic closing down businesses and the need for the Board of Supervisors and all levels of government to create uh, funds for rental assistance and uh, small business grants and uh, sick leave and eviction moratorium, eviction defense moratoriums. So uh, that again is on our agenda for January 26th. I believe that's next, the Tuesday, um, uh, it's either the 25th or the 26th. And uh, we will be coming forward, but blessedly the, the state government is, is uh, jumping ahead and reviewing action uh, and, and, and uh, financial assistance for our residents and businesses. And so we hope to tag team from their efforts and buttress what we can knowing that our budget has been pretty much decimated be in dealing with the COVID response. So um, we have spent the last 
couple of days uh, working on um, uh, district um, department head, we call it evaluations, but it's really an opportunity to talk with all of our department heads about their work plans for the year, uh, letting them know that some of the plans on their agenda may have to be telescoped out. And that work plan for the year will be coming forward uh, on that Tuesday, the last Tuesday of the month. We're also planning on some special meetings next week to finish those discussions with some of the key positions. Uh, we did meet uh, in person in the board chambers, distance probably six to eight feet away from each other wearing masks and with the windows open so I felt very secure. But uh, we know that even at the board level, uh, one of us could be exposed to COVID and would have to quarantine. And in fact, that's what happened. Uh, Chris Corsi met with a staff member who was later diagnosed as COVID positive. So he is quarantining at home as he should be. Uh, we are getting ready to announce um, mass distribution uh, of a vaccine at the Sonoma County or the Santa Rosa Fairgrounds. Windsor and Petaluma. Oh, where is Sonoma Valley in that, says the supervisor and all of you. Uh, we are in discussions with uh, Sonoma Valley to uh, stand up uh, an area for um, vaccine distribution, probably in connection with the Sonoma Valley Health Center. And I hope that we get the details worked out quickly I'm also advocating for distribution in Oakmont that may facilitate as distribution for Kenwood and Glen Ellen, if need be. I don't wanna have 5,300 seniors plus driving 30 minutes away, mixing with folks uh, when they've been sheltered in place uh, for nine months. And so far I have not been successful, but stay tuned, I'm determined on this. Let's see what I can do. And I'm really disappointed that Kaiser is not being more responsive than they are. They said, do you know how difficult it is uh, to establish the distribution sites? I said, yes, I do know. We've been working on this at the county for the past month. And look how many seniors uh, use you or as uh, our healthcare providers. You want us to drive all the way up to there to access vaccines when we should be having them right here. So I'll continue to work on that, but if you are a Kaiser patient or another health provider, I would encourage you to reach out to them and advocate for more distribution sites in Sonoma Valley and elsewhere, of course, it's not just Sonoma Valley. We cannot ask people to come to just three locations over the next month or two to receive their vaccines. But that being said, I would, and the official word at the county, and I would encourage you all to reach out to healthcare providers and say, when am I going to be prioritized for a vaccine? Um, I, we keep getting um, information about, well, I'm 55, but I have extreme underlying medical conditions and I should be prioritized for vaccine. And I said, absolutely, you should be. But that's a discussion that you need to have with your healthcare provider. I'm comfortable that we will get there, but like all communities and all states, we are slow in understanding the Herculean task before us of distribution sites and uh, recruiting qualified folks to administer the vaccines. I know Damon, you serve on the firefighting board, a fire district board. Uh, and firefighters have said that we have a lot of folks trained, they're willing to do it, but for how long? And so it, it, it's an issue. And the inoculations are not quite like a flu shot where you go off and get your flu shot and then go home and with maybe a little soreness of the arm. Sometimes it kicks you in the seat of the pants. Uh, I've heard, I haven't had my vaccination yet. So uh, especially the second uh, dosage of vaccine. So that being said, um, we are working on an aggressive uh, work plan, including a two-year roads plan coming forward. I hope to prioritize local roads. We have identified a serious um, uh, menu of roads that will be funded for repaving from the PG&E settlement funds, such as Trinity and Cavedale Road and um, 
O'Donnell, I think is in there, uh, and a number of other roads. And the board approved tier 1A, B, and tier 2, uh, a mixture of projects for the county. And really looking at opportunities to create some turnouts for evacuation and emergency access for sure. I'm trying to remember what else is on our work plan, um, but we just finished up with Johannes, with vaccine and Johannes uh, moving forward with Vital Lands Initiative on the board agenda, maybe in at the end of January. Housing homelessness, always a challenge, but we'll be working on that as well. And probably tree preservation may be coming forward. Vacation rental ordinance will be coming forward a couple of different times again. General plan, we are going to be moving forward and an update of the general plan and planning some many opportunities for public outreach. And it probably will occur at the end of this year and throughout next year if the general plan update follows uh, similar general plan update efforts it will take a couple of years to get through this. But you might think about um, what opportunities we need to create for more housing or potentially more commercial development, different kinds of commercial development to diversify the economic base of Sonoma Valley. Uh, look around your communities to say what's working, what's not, what should we be thinking about for the future? And, um, and we had a discussion about ad hocs. We're going to limit the role of ad hocs, but climate change uh, ad hoc is moving forward and I was reelected uh, for the second year as chair of the Sonoma County Transportation Authority and the Regional Climate Protection Authority. That's a group that has representatives from all of the cities and the supervisors. Logan Harvey was elected as vice chair again, and we are going to be moving forward aggressively, especially in March, to bring forward a climate mobilization strategy. So I would encourage, and I'll send you links if you're interested, or you can go on the SCTA website to look at that. This, uh, I believe, is such an important issue. We will move beyond COVID. We will begin the economic recovery that we all hope and want to see. And we do need to focus on the serious issue of climate change. And it is an all hands on deck effort for that. It's the county major initiative. It's all of our nonprofits, the Regional Climate Protection Authority, all of the cities. And we would welcome your energies because I know that a number of you have been involved in, in climate change and adaptation uh, along the way. And so uh, I hope that you will contribute to uh, your ideas on how we need to jumpstart and transform our economy into a post-carbon economy moving forward. I think that's enough said. Gave you a brief update and I look forward to your discussion tonight on uh, codifying your priorities and however I can be helpful in that discussion, please let me know. Thank you, Supervisor Gorin, and, and thank you for all your efforts, uh, continuing efforts in this. I mean, 2020 was a heck of a year to be the chair of the Board of Supervisors. <laughs> so, <laughs> and and um, thank you for all, all you're doing and all you have done. Um, so let's see, I think, yeah, is there anyone among the public who would like um, to speak on matters uh, mentioned by Supervisor Gorin? And Arthur, before you get there, um, I did want to announce um, Ariel and I are holding conversations with fire survivors tomorrow night at 530. Oh, Please contact you. her and get the Zoom link for that conversation. And the following week, we will continue our conversations in Spanish, our charla comunitarias uh, led by Karina Garcia. And I'm so thankful that uh, I have both Ariel and Karina on our staff continuing forward. And you should probably know, sadly, Pat Gilardi is uh, going to be retiring in April. And so we will be having a transition in our office. Ariel will be working with Pat to learn the job of uh, district director. Uh, Karina is uh, working as she has been working as a field representative, interacting in the community and we will have a vacancy. So if people are interested in joining the District 1 team, let me know because we'll be recruiting and, and interviewing probably in 
February and March. Uh, right. Supervisor Gord, I do, I, I, at the risk of co correcting your boss, um, tomorrow is you actually the Charla, and <laughs> uh, tomorrow is, is the Charla, and then uh, the following Thursday is the conversation with fire survivors, and we're hoping to have Mike McGuire, his office is um, uh, very busy, and so it's hard to nail them down, but that's, that's the plan. Thank you, Ariel. I appreciate the correction. After two days of uh, sometimes heated discussions with our department directors, I'm lucky I can have any coherent thoughts. So appreciate the cor correction. Ariel, would you mind just sending out the, the information on that fire survivor Zoom to the, to the, the whole Mac? Uh, nope. Unless somebody doesn't want to get that email? Nope, no problem. I can add you guys to my list. And it does look like we do have Larry Davis um, raising his hand for public comment if you would like to open public comment. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, recognize Larry Davis for public comment. Okay, give me one second to allow him to speak. And just a reminder, we have a two minute limit on, on comments. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, Larry. Okay. Hi. I just wanted to stand up for the uh, supervisor and the great work that she did in terms of two things that were on the agenda of the Valley. One being the standing up of the max uh, that was achieved in spite of all the other difficulties this year. And I think she deserves a, a considerable uh, compliment for doing that and bringing them forward in such a professional manner. And secondly, the, uh, the what I thought is a superb work done with the Latino community in terms of mental health initiatives taken in the last several weeks. That's a, a, an untapped uh, gold mine of public service that I think uh, really deserves good compliments. So thank you, Supervisor Gorin, for everything you've done, but particularly for those things. Thanks, Larry. Thank you, Larry. Appreciate those comments. <clears throat> And, and I would add, we did appoint an equity officer the first time ever in Sonoma County. And we had a, um, an interesting discussion today about her role, Alegria de la Cruz. And uh, she is going to be really focused on um, internal uh, workings at the county to make sure that we are trained and uh, with the appropriate sensitivities uh, and conceptions about bias. And, um, but she's already involved in the community and I would encourage uh, this Mac to start working with Ariel in inviting some of our department directors to join your Zoom meetings. Alegria might be one of them, but we have uh, 16 to 18 other di different department heads to join you and, and to help you understand the workings of the county. Thank you, Supervisor. Um, Ariel, could you send a list of those uh, departments and department heads so we can sort of take a look at the menu and figure out uh, some invitations for the future? Sure, no problem. And we can do that in our agenda setting meetings as well. Um, yeah. And, and I, I think it, it makes sense to kind of go on what you, what you want to focus on because we probably have a department for that and then we can kind of tie it in. But, but certainly yeah. I can send a list out. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, I think we are ready to move on to, unless there's any other comments. Okay, we're ready to move on to uh, item number five, um, priority goal review and ad hoc selection. And I think Ariel's gonna have a screen share for us. And just as a, as a uh, broad overview, um, from looking over the minutes last time and from what I recall, uh, we decided to form three ad hoc committees, uh, which of course this is all subject to, you know, this could be changed, but um, we decided to form an outreach committee, uh, emergency preparedness and a traffic safety committee. Okay, and I'm, I'm just gonna share the document, um, you know, uh, briefly just to, to remind everybody um, and then if it's okay, I would like to stop sharing my screen so I can see all your faces and I can always throw it back up there. Um, it's sure. easier for me to watch folks raising their hands um, if I don't have my screen share on. Yeah, so yeah, as we can see, this is, um, yeah, the goal of developing an outreach plan, we'll have an ad hoc committee for that, uh, ad hoc committee for enhanced emergency preparedness and response. 
and ad hoc for traffic and safety issues. And then, uh, you know, possible um, future ad hoc committees would be uh, community projects. I mean, these are all still within our purview, so we could, it's not like we can't address some of these things, but initially uh, we wanted to focus on three ad hoc committees so we don't get, get too stretched out. Um, so anyways, the other, other goals are community projects, uh, expand the stock of affordable housing and adapt to climate change, uh, which I know you all can read, but I thought it might help just to say those out loud. Um, anybody, anybody have any comments on uh, what's up on the screen right now? Okay, I think Ariel, if you want to take that down, I think we're, we're good. Um, so is, is there any, any um, does anybody have any thoughts or reservations or additional comments about forming those three ad hoc committees or other ad hoc committees that they would rather see? Wow, it's an easy group here. Um, <laughs> let's see. Um, okay, well, is anybody from the public, uh, would anyone from the public like to make a comment on uh, those committees and those choices? I might, I might want to say, I might want to suggest that you discuss actually the ad hoc formation. So who might want to serve on what ad hoc before we go to public comment, just because you can only do public comment once in the item and um, they might have comments after, after that. So uh, do I understand that? So we should um, talk about uh, who's actually going to serve on ad hoc committees before public comment? Uh, I, I, that, that, I might, I'm, I'm suggesting that that might be something to think about. Yeah. Um, no, that's, that sounds fine. Yeah, I don't have any problem with that. Um, so why don't we start with the, um, the outreach committee. Um, and let me actually, before we get into the specifics, I, here's what I'm thinking, um, just as a really broad general plan for, for the ad hocs is that each ad hoc, um, you know, will be formed with anywhere from one to three members of the MAC. And that ad hoc will, um, one of the probably the first thing they should do is is develop um, uh, priorities and and goals uh, that they can address over the next approximately twelve months, and um, and and then come up with a work plan. And my hope would be that at the next meeting the ad hocs can can then report on that uh, to the general MAC. And um, and I'm looking forward to, to these ad hocs being created because the ad hoc committee members will be able to work together uh, more closely than we can uh, in the general MAC because we're limited by the Brown Act. But uh, we, we can communicate freely among ad hoc members. So that'll be good. Uh, I think we'll get be able to get more done um, because of that. Um, yeah, Council Member Newhauser. Uh, just a question of clarification. Um, will uh, council members be limited to one ad hoc committee? Uh, what do people think about that? There's nothing in the bylaws that limits you to one. So that's kind of on, on you all to decide together. I would just um, respond that it would be great to have as many people on, at, at the most we can have uh, nine members on the ad hoc committees. Um, so, you know, if, if, uh, if somebody being on two ad hocs was limiting somebody else for not being on any ad hocs, then I would say, let's, let's make sure everybody gets on at least one ad hoc. Um, but otherwise, I don't see any problem. Yeah, Council Member yeah. Cooper. I was just wondering, uh, I've thought about this and I'm sure everybody else has too. I'm wondering if we could start out maybe a suggestion of just indicating maybe if there's a committee you would like to be on. Uh, I don't know if that's appropriate or not. But. No, I think I think that's uh, yeah. Uh, so it's, if there's no other comments on the the general ad hocs, let's move on to um, stating what ad hoc we would like to serve on. Um, Vice Chair Das, do you have a ad hoc that you're interested in? Yes, I'd like to be on the emergency preparedness. Uh, ad hoc. Okay, thanks. Uh, Council Member Dickey. No, I don't really have a preference. Uh, you can you can just 
assign me to any of them to fill out the, you know, the entirety of the uh, ad hoc, but I'm, I'm happy to serve on any of the three. That's great. All right, thank you. Um, Council Member Cooper. Uh, I, would, I would like the traffic committee. Okay, thanks. Okay. Yeah. Um, Council Member Newhouser. Uh, yes, um, I'm interested in the uh, emergency preparedness. Um, I have some interest in traffic and safety issues and some experience with that. But uh, like uh, Councilman Dickey, I'm willing to serve on whichever yeah. committees uh, is appropriate for me to be on. Thank you. All right, thanks, Council Member. Um, Council Member Eagles. Yes, I think I'd like to serve on the outreach committee, but like others, I, I will, I'd like to serve on some ad hoc committee, so I will slot in, um, but outreach is my, my, my first choice. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Um, Council member Nardo Morgan. Um, I think I could serve on either outreach or traffic and safety. I'm happy to do either one that you need me for. All right. Thanks. And Council Member Handren? I'd prefer to be on the outreach committee if possible. But again, like everyone else, I can be flexible. All right, thank you. And so um, Ariel, remind me if, uh, can we have, if we had four members, can we, can we use alternates and go above the three you cannot. So you you can you're limited to three, but um, you know I I'm writing these down on the document right now, so then I can share my screen and you can kind of look at it. Um, right now we don't have any that have more than three. Okay. Um, so depending on what alternate Dowling says, um, you know we might be good or we might have to have someone compromise on something. Okay. Thanks, uh, Councilmember Dowling. Um. Kind of obviously outreach. Okay. Since I write the newsletter for the Glen Ellen Forum and I own the newspaper. <laughs> and uh, I was also going to say outreach. So um, I think it kind of made sense to me as the as the chair to be the sort of the visible person in the community. Um, and I also would love to work with uh, everybody who's expressed interest in the outreach committee. So. Um, We'll have to figure this out. I, I will put okay, in a um, for uh, um, Council Member Handren, do you speak Spanish? No, unfortunately no. I don't. But you do have some, some contacts with the Hispanic community. Yes, that's correct. Uh -huh. Arthur, may I just say something? It seems like nobody really wants to be on traffic and safety. And even though I do outreach for a living, I will be happy to go on traffic and safety. <laughs> okay, thank you, Council Member Norda Morgan. Um, I think uh, Council Member Cooper would like to be on traffic and safety. Okay. And, uh, and myself. And yeah. Council Member Newhouse. Everybody. Yeah. Okay. Where? Nope. Yeah, Council Member Eagles. Where are we short one? Because I, maybe I'm the likely person to back away from outreach. So okay. here, I will, I will share my screen. This is exactly why I did it this way. So I didn't put um, down council member Dickey on anything because he said whatever was fine with him. Um, so the folks that mentioned two, I, I put one and two. Um, so currently we have on outreach Eagles, Nardo Morgan, Handron, Dowling, and Dawson as expressing interest. Um, for uh, emergency preparedness, we have Dawson, Newhauser, and uh, traffic and safety, Cooper, Newhauser, and Nardo Morgan. You can take me off outreach. I'm, I, there's too many people on there. I'm, I'm happy to leave. <laughs> so Ariel, just to be, uh, I'm not sure if I'm clear yet. So if, if we had a outreach committee that included an alternate, could we have four members or not? You, you cannot. You cannot, okay. Whether it's a regular member or an alternate. Um, so we, so it's, it's only three members. Um, okay. Alternates are free to serve on ad hocs but the, it does not change the number um, to be less than a quorum. Okay. 
Uh, I am also willing to, um, to, to go to another committee as needed. Or ad hoc, it's not a committee, is it? <laughs> Who said that? Um, Council Member Handron? Yeah. yeah, that was me, Vicki Handron. I, I, um, I just want to, I, I would love to be, to work with, with all the people who've expressed interest and I, and I would love to work with uh, Councilmember Eagles because we're old friends from way back and, and, um, and at the same time for outreach, I think it's important that we have um, someone who's got connections with the Hispanic community. Um, so I'd encourage, encourage Councilmember Handron to, to um, keep herself in the running, I guess. The way to put it, yeah, Councilmember Eagles. Yeah, uh, agreed, uh, Chair Chair Dawson. And I think you know, um, Councilmember Handred and I are are we live in a similar neighborhood. I think, yeah, I would defer to to Councilmember Handred on this, and I would I would step into um, emergency preparedness to to round out the third there, if that makes sense to to the group here. And also I'm willing to back out of the uh, traffic safety if, if someone wants to fill that position. Councilmember Dickey, are you interested in being in traffic and safety? Sounded like you were. <laughs> Given a thumbs up. Uh, I can't see him, but uh, okay. Yeah, Councilmember Eagles. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I missed, I, I, that was my second choice. So if, if, if council member, Dicky is really flexible. Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought we were already were fully subscribed in, in traffic and safety, but um, oh, I'm, I, it doesn't matter to me. It, just, yeah, it doesn't uh, matter. I mean, I'm not that you know, but 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 Council Member Dicky, I'll, I'll I'll ask you to weigh in on that if you would, if you have a. I'm very okay. flexible. <laughs> I'll be Gumby. <laughs> Councilmember yeah. Dickey, would you mind starting the uh, the yoga ad hoc? <laughs> it'd, it'd be more like the Gumby ad hoc. <laughs> I remember Gumby. That kind of dates me, I think. Yeah, me too. <laughs> okay, so I think I've made all the updates with my fancy, you know, control C, control V. Um, so, uh, because I heard Councilmember Newhauser say that uh, I think his first choice was emergency preparedness. Um, so then we have all of the members serving on one ad hoc, and I think these are more or less matching people's preferences and flexibility. Please correct me if I'm wrong. So, um, I think we're ready to call for a um, call for a motion to accept these uh, appointments to the committee. Uh, uh, I think you should do public comment, but um, oh, sorry, yeah. Before doing that, uh, if I may. Yeah, Councilmember um, Newhouser. Do are there chairs of subcommittees or ad hoc committees? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. So we might want to decide that before going to public comment. Um, or at least propose it. I'm not, yeah, we could. I, I, I guess my inclination would be to have the ad hoc committee meet and select a chair. Um, it's fine. But um, just I'm thought gonna, I'd raise it. Yeah. That, that, that if other people agree, then that's fine. Okay. Thanks, Councilmember New, Newhazard. Yeah, Councilmember Cooper. I would agree that we meet and, you know, get to know each other a bit <clears throat> and then choose a chairman. That's, that'd be my vote. Either way though, it's fine. Okay, any um, public comments on the ad hoc committees and the selection of committee members? Please raise your hand. I'm afraid I can't see you, so I'll, I'm leaving this to, Ariel to let me know. Uh, I am not seeing any hands raised. Okay, then um, I think, could someone make a motion to, um, to form these ad hoc committees with uh, the committee members as we've just chosen? 
I'm, I'm mm -hmm. sharing, I'm sharing it. A, um, again, if someone wants to say out the motion, I, I don't know if that's super necessary, but um, there they are to read if you like. Okay. Uh, Council Member Newhazard, did you, did you want to move sure. to accept this? Uh, move to have the three uh, ad hoc committees established with uh, uh, Council Members Handron, Dowling, and Dawson on the uh, outreach committee. Uh, Council Members Doss, Newhauser, and Dickey on the Emergency Preparedness Committee, and Council Members Cooper, Eagles, and Nardo Morgan on the Traffic and Safety Issues Committee. And do I hear a second of that motion? Okay. I second. All right, thanks, had a couple seconds there. Uh, all in favor of accepting this motion to form the ad hoc committees, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, unanimously passed. This is way too easy. <laughs> um, I'm sure we'll hit something later on that won't, won't be so easy, but <laughs> all right, Council Member Newhauser. Question of convening um, initial meetings. Um, do we need to discuss dates since no one's chairing yet? Um, um, how about if we have a uh, if someone would volunteer from each committee to be the convener as opposed to the chair, and then you can, you can take it from there. And, so and should that date uh, be at a certain time before the next meeting so that we can report back? Uh, that's, that makes sense. I don't know if-, if I meant before the next MAC meeting. Right. Yeah, Council Member Eagles. Uh, Chair Dawson, on that point, can, can you reiterate your, your, your timing comment from, from before, um, just to kind of put that into context? Um, oh, as far as what, what would be expected at the next? Uh, yeah, the next meeting and, and subsequent, you, you made some comment about the ad hoc expectations. Um, can yeah, you, can you so what, what I'm thinking um, is that um, the ad hoc committees would initially um, decide on their priorities and um, you know, possibly write a mission statement. I don't know if that's, I think we've pretty well got that hammered out, but, um, but anyway, really decide what the priorities are and then create a work plan uh, for over the next 12 months. Uh, I'm not thinking of anything super detailed necessarily. You know, it might be like, uh, I'm on outreach committee. I'm just gonna throw this out there. Uh, you know, we'll, um, our goal over the next 12 months is to meet with as many uh, community groups as possible, and we will have an outreach meeting to a group at least once a month. So, for example, maybe we would meet with the, um, uh, the Glen Allen Forum would be, you know, one month we would meet with, with them and then um, report on that at the next meeting. Another, another month might be, um, you know, a group in, in a Kenwood. Um, so that could be very bare bones, but just, just to give a general idea of, of what we expect and what we plan to accomplish. And then we can, um, and that's, that's just my thought kind of off the top of my head, but uh, have, have some, some kind of a path laid out. Any other comments on that or on what we should expect from the ad hocs? Yes, Council Member Eagles. Sorry, I do have one more question sort of about how the ad hocs, I'm thinking, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, admittedly, so, you know, shut me down as needed, but I'm thinking about how we report out at meetings. Are, are, are we going to be on the agenda or will we report out only every other month? Does anyone have a feel for how that will work moving forward? Anyone have any? We can discuss, so we can discuss some that. of I the have, stuff that comes up. I have up, an idea, you know? but I'll, yeah. I'll let other people talk first. Um, Well, I would, um, at this point, I'm thinking, you know, there's um, reports and announcement from council members, which is item number seven on this month. And I would think we could just put reports from the ad hocs uh, probably under that item. Um, does anybody see any problem with that? And that would just fold right into what we're already doing. So it uh, would make sense to me. An observation? Yeah, council member Dickey. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense, Arthur, because some of these ad hoc committees may be, you know, in front of the others in terms of their progress or, or, you know, the information that they decide that they're ready to, to provide to the community. So I think maintaining, you know, sort of a, 
a monthly ability to address these things as we go is probably pretty wise. All right, thanks council member. And council member Das? Probably in the initial months, we'll wanna be a report every month, but I could see very quickly in a couple of three months, it may be every other month for some of them and the others are gonna be regular because of the nature of their task. Uh, outreach may be every month. Uh, mm -hmm. Emergency preparedness may be every quarter. I don't know, we'll just have to see, but I think that's how it'll, it'll sort itself out. Thank you, Vice Chair Das. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, I mean, I think there should always be an option for, a, for an ad hoc to, to uh, you know, not, not report if there's nothing to report. But I think good to have some expectations as well. Yeah. Any other comments? Yeah, Councilmember Eagles. Just one more follow up. I agree, and thank you all for your input. I guess I guess I'm still kind kind of getting used to process here and the fact that something that's not on the agenda cannot be discussed. So I guess again, I might be getting ahead of myself, but I'm I'm kind of just thinking through how do members of the community provide input on some of these topics and how do we discuss them, I suppose we have to see what kind of comes up to the top of the, of the surface here and see what rises to the agenda level and just put it on the agenda. I think it's as simple as that. So, uh, you know, I guess that's where I was going with that whole discussion about how do we, how do we update folks and what does that look like? I think my real question was, how do we get the community in, to engage in some of these topics? But I think unless anyone has other thoughts, they just have to go on the agenda at some point. Well, I think um, as, as an ad hoc, um, you're on traffic and safety, is that right? That's right? Uh, yes, yeah. I okay. think that's just, it. Just use that as an example, <laughs> it doesn't really matter, but um, um, so I could imagine uh, the traffic and safety committee, you know, meets maybe, maybe part of what you would want to do, and I'm not on the committee, so I can't really say, but you might want to, um, you know, call a community meeting or, and talk to people in certain neighborhoods about, you know, uh, traffic safety locations that are uh, potentially dangerous. You know, like, uh, well, like in your neighborhood, I've heard that people coming out of uh, Morningside Mountain sometimes, that's sometimes kind of a weird, weird exit from the, from that side of, and that one intersection is people don't really expect people to be coming in, you know, from the, the west side of that intersection. That's just an example, but, so I could imagine maybe, you know, you would, um, you know, talk to people you know, maybe call a community meeting and then uh, start kicking around some ideas. And then, you know, if it seems like you've got enough uh, momentum there, uh, then you could suggest at a MAC meeting that it would be on the agenda, you know, for the following month. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah Supervisor good. Gorin. Uh, thank you. When it comes to traffic and safety, I would encourage you to work with me and my staff and potentially transportation and public works anytime it involves a community meeting because you really need to understand um, the challenges that TPW may have in establishing uh, directions forward. And if you're looking at planning grant funding, it would be the county that would apply for the planning grant funding for um, options in the future. So when you get, when you meet, uh, why don't you see if I can join uh, your committee meeting with all of my time <laughs> and, and that we can plot out um, how we might move forward together uh, because I know that this in particular uh, may involve a uh, county expertise. When it comes to community preparedness, uh, we have um, had some success in uh, working on community preparedness with the Springs Mac and the schools there. And so don't reinvent the wheel. Let's meet together to talk about how we are moving forward in that direction. And then you can um, come together to really figure out, are there other specifics that uh, you really want to work on as, as a MAC that we're not working on currently? So check in with us um, and I'm, I, there is a limitation on staffing, of course. Ariel is the staff for the North Valley MAC. And yay, Ariel, I'm so glad to have you. Uh, and she's not gonna be staffing the ad hoc meetings, but before you go adventuring, ad adventuring 
uh, yeah. out in there and reinventing the wheel, uh, check in with us and maybe we can give you some good ideas on how you might consider moving forward. Well, also, I just I want to I want to add just super briefly that um, once I have some time, um, definitely before the next Mac meeting, I'm going to update the website to include the ad hocs and what they are and who's on them. Your contact information is all already on the website. I don't know how much traffic it gets, but um, you know we can share it on our Facebook. Um, you know if they kind of would press wanted to point people in that direction, so then the the, the community could reach out directly to you as the ad hoc. Um, and so some of that could happen organically. One more suggestion regarding communications. I'm delighted that you're forming an ad hoc on communications because quite frankly, the county is challenged uh, to figure out how to communicate effectively and through the max is great. But when we do have issues like community preparedness, we would love to have um, identification of the most effective ways to outreach to the community. And it's a give and, a give and take an exchange of information, um, information coming from the grassroots up to the county and then back again. Uh, we do have a rapidly growing communications team under Paul Gullickson. And I would just ordinarily just jump on and say, have a meeting with Paul. And we are absolutely consumed with communications regarding COVID and the vaccine distribution. So uh, you might uh, pick our brains, pick uh, a, maybe we can get somebody from the communications team on uh, your committee meeting so that they can follow who you are and what you're doing. And we can be more involved in the future, but as, as the board is trying to telescope out uh, the work that we're doing to really focus on the public health right now. Uh, so will you, and you know the community, that's why you are MAC members. Thank you, Supervisor and Vice Chair Das. It's very possible with the emergency planning and one of the aspects of emergency planning is evacuation planning that we may cross over with another ad hoc on traffic safety. And so how do we handle, how do we make sure that we're not off in one direction planning evacuation routes that are not in, that might be in conflict with some other traffic patterns? How do we communicate? I guess that's coming back to the board, to the MAC at our regular meeting and letting people know what we're doing so that we don't go too far in one direction while another group is going in another. And I would say um, if you're tackling evacuations, uh, it probably is um, in the purview of uh, folks at the county that are already working on evacuation routes. And of course you would know that Damon because you're in the in the emergency um, fields, but the sheriff is in charge of evacuations and working with the Office of Emergency Management. They have been working uh, diligently on a lot of different things. And as you've noted in the last couple of fires, uh, we have been very successful in evacuating folks in a speedy way, uh, well ahead of the time when the fire might be approaching those uh, boundary lines. Uh, that you know so well. And I do understand only too well the fire trauma that we still have, the PTSD that we still have from the fires three years ago and then certainly the glass fire. So um, uh, as you talk about what it is you want to achieve with community preparedness, then we can help you figure out the best way to outreach and get the information that you need. And maybe it is some of those individuals coming to make presentations to the MAC members and the community at large on how those areas uh, function in the event of an emergency. Thank you, Supervisor. Yeah, Council Member Cooper. Um, Supervisor Gore mentioned getting kind of educated as to what the county is doing in these different areas. Um, I went to the website, <clears throat> excuse me, county website, and I seem to go all over the place. What, what is the best way to get uh, background and get information about what's already there? What, what, is it the website? Is it to call somebody? 
Uh, it's, it's 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 definitely the website, and we are the largest employer in Sonoma County with 4,300 employees, probably 18 to 20 different departments. I haven't counted them recently, as well as independently elected officials of the sheriff, district attorney, uh, and the and the um, auditor, controller, and the assessor, recorder. So each of those entities have their own website and I wish it could say, gee, we've made it so easy for you to find information. And mm -hmm. no, we haven't. And especially now with our emergency preparedness yeah. website of socoemergency.org, you should really spend some time trolling around that. Um, and it is so chaotic, uh, I will say quite frankly, because we've had information about the fires, recovery, watershed, and now we've lumped in uh, the COVID testing sites, uh, data, and I think we're about ready to launch a separate website for vaccine vaccination information distribution and access points uh, because it is so complicated. But I would start there uh, for your information on how the county sort of organizes itself and the information on the website. And if you hover your cursor, you can dive down into some of the data that's embedded in the website. But Transportation and Public Works has their own website on the county's uh, website, of course, dealing with roads and the roads plan and the roads funding, uh, the <laughs> Board of Supervisors, all of that. You could spend weeks um, navigating your way through the website and uh, you get a PhD in, in county organization. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Supervisor. Okay. Thank you. Um, I just got a note from uh, Ariel that if we wanted to postpone her presentation until next time, uh, we could. Um, I'm inclined to just keep keep rolling. I think the budget is an important thing to talk about. But um, does anybody anybody like that idea, or should we just um, move on to the next item, which is uh, Ariel's presentation on the uh, North Valley MAC budget? It looks like uh, Council Member Newhouser also has uh, his hand up. I think on this item. Yeah, Council Member Newhouser. Uh, just briefly to build on um, what uh, Supervisor Gloren said, um, and going back to our earlier discussions about the max role, um, I think we we recognize that that education and community engagement is, is a primary goals to the kind of over over all of our individual um, priorities and and goals, and um, with with what Supervisor Gore said about engaging with the county, uh, trying to find information either online or through uh, communications with, uh, with the county staff. I think our job is really to distill all of this information into um, very accessible information that, they, that we then make available to, our, to the greater Glen Ellen Kenwood community. And I think um, I'm already thinking about how we would be working with other ad hoc uh, uh, committees uh, or between committees, even though I know that's disallowed, but I think when we come back together as the MAC, we're going to be talking about how, for example, we will be bringing like, if, like a refined evacuation plan that makes it really easy for people to follow. Um, and then that goes into the communication and outreach so that that information is then readily available. Um, so anyway, I think that, that I'm just trying to simplify what it is we're trying to do here. And to me, it's really about information. Anyway, that's it. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Councilmember Newhauser. And, and uh, just to throw one more thing on that is, I, I mean, I certainly see the outreach committee as serving as a conduit for any, any outreach. Uh, you know, the other ad hocs can work through us to um, get information out to the community especially since we have the publisher of our local paper uh, on the committee, <laughs> that'll make it easy. All right, um, so I think we are ready to move on to uh, Ariel's presentation on our budget. Okay. It's riveting, you guys should be really excited. <laughs> Okay, can you see the can you see the PowerPoint? Yes. 
Okay. Well, I need to get all my windows situated. Um, okay, so um, in addition, so you know me, um, but in addition to working with uh, your Mac as well as fire survivors and uh, various other roles in the D1 office, um, I manage our community investment funds and our tourism impact funds um, for the supervisor. So before we get um, to the budget, I wanna give you some background. Um, personally, I feel like I need all of the information to really understand um, something. So bear with me while I, while I explain this from the beginning. Um, so Measure L is a voter approved measure from 2016 that raised the transit occupancy tax from 9% to 12%. Uh, based on the information provided to voters, the breakdown of this voter approved funding looks like this. Um, and tourism impact funds, so that 10% um, is where your MAC budget comes from. So um, we have to be pretty careful about how we spend these funds since this was voted in by the, by the voters. Um, we have to honor the ballot language. Uh, you can review the policy for yourself online. Um, most of the words on this slide and some of my other slides are completely taken directly from the policy. Uh, the easiest way to find the policy if you're interested is to um, Google Sonoma County Community Investment Fund and look for the policy that's gonna be on the left-hand side of that page. Uh, and Measure L is, is described within the policy. So um, that 10%, that the tourism impact funds, how are they allocated? So um, they're allocated proportional to each supervisorial district um, related to the amount that was brought in by that district. So that sounds really jargony, but it just means that um, however much, um, you know, TOT funds were collected by uh, in Supervisor Gordon's district, we get 10% of that in our offices, um, community investment fund or tourism impact fund. Um, our district gets the second highest amount of all five districts. Um, West County gets slightly more. Uh, district four gets significant, which is Healdsburg um, area. They get some as well. And uh, districts two and three receive hardly any. Um, they don't have as many tourism uh, you know, functions in their districts. Um, in uh, fiscal year 1819, so this isn't this year, this is essentially two years ago, um, we got, um, you know, 194,000 and change. Um, we generally receive these funds in September following the close of the fiscal year. So fiscal year 1819, we received the funds in September. Um, so uh, we didn't, for fiscal year 1920, that just ended in July 2020, um, we didn't get the actuals until late November, just due to 2020 being what 2020 was. Um, but uh, so we, we generally get what's similar to um, previous years. Um, last fiscal year, obviously, we was, was different. Um, we had uh, power shutoffs, we had the Kincaid fire, and then we had the um, COVID shutdown that began in March and continues to this day. Um, the county saw a dramatic reduction in TOT taxes across the board, which include, which impacted all of the Measure L categories, including that 10% for tourism impact funds. Um, in, in, 20, uh, in 1920, we basically had August and September as normal years. Uh, normal months, and then the rest of the months um, were impacted in one way or another. Uh, the county was expecting a 30% uh, reduction, but when the numbers came in, um, our, uh, you know, District 1's share of the tourism impact funds was actually um, about a 45% reduction. Um, so as you can see, you know, we got 194,000, and then we got about 100, a little over 100,000 for um, uh, fiscal year 1920. And of course, since fiscal years are, you know, uh, on the all, uh, they're opposite the calendar year, um, this isn't going to get much better, right? I mean, we, we have hope because of the vaccine um, that, that we may start to turn around, but you know, the, the lower um, revenues are, are expected to continue 
um, at least in the short term. So I expect um, fiscal year 2021 to be similarly impacted. Um, and that's just that's just a little bit about you know the funds and, and where they come from and how they do kind of fluctuate. Um, so how can they be used? So those tourism impact funds. Um, this is straight from the Community Investment Fund policy. Um, these are the things that Supervisor Gorin at her discretion can spend uh, those funds on. So um, as you see, you know, safety improvements, um, environmental mitigation, public safety, and then um, projects that benefit the community or support organizations that coordinate community improvements, which includes the MAX. Um, so um, you all are a small but significant part of an overall kind of puzzle. Um, so how do we usually use our tourism impact funds? Um, so when a supervisor makes an allocation from their tourism impact funds, there's a, pro there's a process it needs to go through um, where it gets board approval. It needs to be approved by the majority of the board. Supervisor Warren can't just spend the money as she wishes. Um, so uh, all of the organizations, um, oh, sorry, I'm on the, I'm on the wrong section. So, um, so these are, um, Supervisor Gorin generally likes to contribute it a relatively smaller uh, amounts to a large number of organizations to kind of make the most impact. Um, some, some supervisors dump their entire amount into one big project and that's just not how the supervisor likes to do things. Um, so this list is most, if not all, besides the MAC of the allocations we made in fiscal year 1920. Um, just for your awareness, anything in red or fuchsia was done in response to COVID-19. Um, these included things like rental assistance, meals and services for Sonoma Valley homeless, food aid and aid for undocumented residents. Um, we're just in the beginning phases of planning our expenditures for 2021 um, because we didn't get the numbers until late November. Um, but, you know, um, uh, Supervisor Gorin likes to uh, have an impact and she also likes to leave a little bit left over so that we're never completely empty because um, it, it's, it's nice to have that money. It's a privilege and um, we should use it to respond to, you know, community needs, whether through the MAC or, or other avenues. Um, so there's a specific process, as with everything in government, that you have to go through to allocate these funds. Um, that's what I manage in the office. Um, all of the organizations on the previous slide, um, I worked with them to get in their application and get the funding through the board and get them their checks. Um, the funds can only be used for the purpose they're, uh, uh, they're approved for. Um, so Supervisor Gorin has decided to give both of the MACs, so the Springs MAC and the North Valley MAC, um, a $10,000 budget per fiscal year. Um, so this budget is to be used on ongoing expenses as well as for any projects um, that are approved uh, through the ad hoc, or it doesn't even necessarily be through the ad hoc, just through the MAC. Um, our MAC currently has really, really low ongoing expenses um, our, since we started in the virtual world. Our only expense is the minute taker. Um, you know, in the future, we may need to pay for translation. Um, that is something that the Springs uh, does and it's necessary and it's also expensive. Um, I don't think that we'll need to pay for room rental if and when we're back in person, but um, you know, that's something to think about as well. Um, before we ended up in COVID, um, I had heard that we, we could use rooms for free um, in, in our region. So that's, that's good. Um, because, um, I should have clicked that earlier. Uh, so um, be, because it needs to go through the board, um, I created a, a form um, that you guys can fill out and send to me that I, then, then I can get it uh, approved by the supervisor or maybe she would ask for revisions. It's all theoretical right now since we don't have any proposals or plans on the table, but, um, uh, and, and I need that form so that I can get it through the board. It's, it's, it's a process. Um, so this is an example of the form. Um, it's a fillable PDF form. Um, it's pretty simple, honestly. Um, so yes, 
Uh, and um, so partnering with agencies. So the MAC, and this is important, the MAC is not a fiscal entity. You aren't, you aren't a fiscal entity. You don't have a bank account. Um, you, are, you are essentially a subset of the Board of Supervisors um, through Supervisor Warren. So um, you can't sign contracts or you can't, you can't apply for grants. Um, these funds are essentially your type of a grant that you could apply for. You are um, welcome to identify grants and recommend them to nonprofits. Um, and you can also partner with a nonprofit um, to get a project done because they can receive the money. Um, some expenditures might not need to partner with an, uh, with an organization or a nonprofit. Um, so for just to give you an example, because I know it's hard to talk in hypotheticals, um, the Springs MAC recently, they have a preparedness ad hoc and they decided to embark on a map your neighborhood program, which is a specific type of um, kind of a block captain, uh, get to know your neighborhood and prepare for emergencies program. Um, they needed brochures for that program um, to hand out to the community. And we were able to just kind of fund those through, through these funds and it comes off of their budget, but they didn't need to partner with anyone. Our, our office can assist with that. So depending on the, on the scale, of a project you want to do, you may not need a partner. Um, on the other end, um, in, there may come a time um, that you know our office and the community and this MAC wants to embark on a larger, like a big kind of community fair or a disaster preparedness event. Um, District Five did this a couple years ago, where um, you know the the District Five office said, "Hey, I really want to bring." Um, a wellness fair and disaster fair to this community. Um, and the MAC helped planned it and they got nonprofits involved and the office was doing it. And, and something that large that has our whole office's buy-in and it's separate, that doesn't necessarily have to come out of your $10,000 budget either. Those are things that can be dealt with when, when we cross that bridge. Um, and so I think that's kind of the, uh, that's the basics of this. I'm sure you have questions. And this is something we can also revisit in the future if you're, if you're interested. Um, I can do a refresher or if you have specific questions, I can, I can try to bring someone else in or, um, you know, go back over something. And, and I just want to add, thank you, Ariel, for your presentation. And uh, she is absolutely the best. She loves spreadsheets and she goes through the whole decision making process. Wait a minute. Okay, I've sent the notices out to these groups. They have applied. There's money. This money is left over. Uh, and you would think with the kind of funding that Ariel talked about, that it would be relatively easy to afford. Uh, some of the projects and initiatives that the MACs want to move forward on. And yet we have some sunk costs uh, in, um, in, in supporting the MACs and also some of the ongoing responsibilities that we have assumed, like, like parking enforcement in the Springs, that limits our ability to really be creative, innovative, and, and distribute um, a great deal of uh, funding um, I know that Glen Ellen in particular uh, bears the impacts of our tourism industry, and yet a lot of funding goes into other areas of the county, and certainly we want to support all of our great community organizations. Yeah, I'll just add on, on that point. Um, I initially prepared this presentation for the Springs Mac, and I was altering it, and because the Springs Parking Enforcement was so wrapped up in me talking about their historical uh, budget that didn't make it into the revised version of this presentation, but that's um, almost $60,000 um, a fiscal year is spent on Springs parking enforcement. So that wasn't represented on that slide, but um, that is another, you know, um, and, and I know Supervisor Gorin likes to, she doesn't want to have a zero balance as we move into the next year. It's, it, it makes sense to leave something in there um, for the future just in case, in case something like this happens where you don't have revenues, so.
Arthur, you, you can, uh, you, you are, you are chair and you may ask your question and you may call on people if you can unmute yourself. There we go. Okay. I thought since I didn't mute myself, I couldn't unmute myself, but, um, so question, um, about that situation in the Springs. I don't know if it'll ever come up in, in Glen Ellen, but it seems like you said they're spending 60,000 a year on parking. Yeah, that, that's not through the Mac. That's not through the Mac yeah. at all. It just happens to be in the same area. That was a need that predated the Mac. Yeah. Um, that, um, you know, Supervisor Gorin worked with general services to get parking enforcement out there. I mean, I'm just, it's, just curious if that number. And, and let, me, let me just say it's ridiculous. And I complain to my colleagues all the time. <laughs> so maybe yeah. working on this, but yeah. um, it's really I, frustrating. I mean, I gotta, gotta tell you, one of my goals in life is to get a parking ticket in Glen Ellen, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've tried everything, parking the wrong side of the street, all that stuff, but, yeah. um, but actually I, what I did want to ask was, um, so it costs 60,000 a year to, to run parking in the Springs, but doesn't that produce some revenue in return by people paying their parking tickets? Like it seems like it's, there should be a little bit of a balance there. I, I don't know, I don't know the details, but. It's amazing that you would think that all of the revenue goes back to the community and very little of it does. Uh, and so it's, I wouldn't call it, it it's a loss leader for sure. I, I think eventually the Springs area, once the specific plan is approved and once we move forward on uh, creating a community plaza and the little postage stamp uh, of the street that was closed off, uh, the Springs will continue to have challenges with parking as it um, increases economic diversity and development. And they're gonna have to grapple with that. And it may need a community services district or a parking district in the long term as it grows up. And maybe Glen Ellen might as well, but for right now, we all love the sleepy villages of Kenwood and Glen Ellen. And hopefully you will never get a parking ticket in Glen Ellen. Sorry, Arthur. <laughs> I'll tell you, the supervisor said I couldn't get a ticket here. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> yes, um, Council Member Eagles. Thank you, Ariel, for that presentation. That was very informative. I have, I have a question about, about timing. So I th I th what I think you said, correct me if I'm wrong, is that we have 10,000 for, for 2020-21. Uh, if we were to make a request for funds, when would that need to happen to, to make sure that you, you, know, you caught the funds before they, so they didn't you know, uh, expire? So that's actually a fascinating question. Um, so with the tourism impact fund, which is how the max budget is allocated. Um, I don't personally push those items through. I have to work with the, um, the uh, county administrator's office because they bundle all of the districts and they push them through. So it's not really on my timeline, um, but um, I, I do what I can. And I, I did manage to get something through in four weeks, which is, which is really amazing. So, um, so for the fiscal year 2020, 2021, um, I would say any time, any time is fine. You just have to realize that, you know, you have to discuss the project as the MAC. You have to fill out the form as to be approved by the supervisor. And the, the, the $10,000 essentially resets um, July 1st of, of the next fiscal year. I have a hard time talking about fiscal years. It's still unnatural to me, but the next fiscal year, when we get to July 1st, 2021, um, then your, your $10,000 will reset. Um, even if you don't get it together to do a project proposal before that point, since you're a pretty new MAC, um, you just formed ad hoc, you know, that might be what happens. Um, there is a little, I, I didn't pull the budget before this, but um, we've only spent a little bit on the minute taker, but regardless, it will pop back up to 10,000 on July 1st. So um, you don't have to worry about losing it um, because it doesn't roll over anyway. So um, it's not designed to put pressure on you guys. It's really um, designed to be a resource for you, but to, to keep it within the parameters of the MAC um, and uh, you know some discipline, I guess. I hope that's- 
Thanks, Ariel, for, for the uh, presentation. Very informative. Couple of questions. So the minute taker costs money um, and that comes out of the $10,000. So we should have some representation of what that costs so that if we're gonna prepare a budget, we know that we have to prepare for that amount of money on a monthly basis, correct? Sure, yeah, um, because you guys have so few costs, I didn't worry about that, but I'm happy to provide Okay. Budget. Um, and I think, I think my internet froze. Okay, I'm back. Um, and I will tell you that her hourly rate is $100 per meeting hour and she's not paid for a transcription. So it's, it's not a huge amount. Um, um, and it sounds like a lot of money until you realize how long it takes to transcribe minutes. So, um, but, but we're, that's, that's the rate for minute takers. Um, that's the same rate that the Springs Mac minute taker gets paid. Brings me to a second question. So um, Zoom meetings, are there any associated costs with Zoom meetings? There are not. Um, we use the county license. So we have the county license outside of the MAC. Um, and that's what we use um, for, you know, for these meetings. Um, so I, do we pay I, for travel yeah. time for minute takers or for you, for you if we have meetings in person? You do not. So, and the reason I ask those questions is because we become accustomed to these Zoom meetings and they are relatively efficient. And, you know, there might be times when we want to meet in person, but if there's an efficiency to it that we can capture uh, both financially and time-wise, it might be worthwhile to, you know, investigate continuing those even after COVID quarantine has passed. And I guess that would be a conversation we would have, you know, in the bigger picture. And uh, I would say, Matt, you're absolutely right, that virtual genie is not going to go back into the bottle. We, I love being able to communicate with you pretty effectively uh, without having to get into a car. And it does save expenses, certainly for rental uh, and people's times to actually come to a meeting. Uh, we're having pretty good success, I think, uh, in outreaching to the community virtually. It's easy for them to zoom in and zoom out. I'm finding on the board that um, we do miss being with each other. Uh, the relationships that we form as an elected board and certainly appointed, appointed board may uh, be affected in the long run. But I, I think that that is something that uh, we as a MAC and you as a MAC members should discuss in the future when it's safe to meet uh, in person again. And I'm somewhat optimistic, I'm trying to figure out what the vaccination schedule might look like, maybe as early as this summer. Uh, it may be important to have a big community uh, celebration that it's safe to come together and, and then uh, continue the conversations about what we value about Zoom or meeting in person, but good observation. Thank you, Supervisor. I, I have a question, um, you know, for having uh, ad hoc committee meetings, and, and this may not be an issue, but uh, like I don't personally have a, a, a paid Zoom account, so I think I'd be limited to 45 minutes. Is it possible to use the county Zoom account for uh, ad hoc meetings? Uh I can't staff your meeting, but I, um, under the circumstances, I am willing to schedule you meetings and send you the link. Great. And as long as you all realize that if you guys don't all show up or um, something happens, that I might not be there to fix it right away. Um, I will fix it when I get to it. I will do my best, but um, it's not a huge problem for me to just schedule a meeting. Okay, great. Understood. Yeah. Um, and I think that Council Member Newhouser has a, a, his hand up. Yes, thank you. Um, just a clarification, the uh, 10K is allocated, um, but we have to submit a budget first and a, the submittal form, is that correct? So, sorry, I didn't, I didn't explain that part quite right in my presentation. So you do not, 
you do not have you don't have to submit a budget. Um, if you would like to see the budget, I'm happy to provide it to you for transparency and for your knowledge. You don't have to submit that. Um, the ongoing expenses, which right now is just a minute taker, that's not something that you have to submit for. It's only if you identify a project that you submit. And, and the reason for the form is to help me with my job. It's, it's one to make it succinct so that I can present it to Supervisor Gorin if she didn't happen to be here at the meeting where you discuss it. Mm -hmm. um, and the second part is there's a specific form that I need to put through that then the county administrator takes and creates a board item and then it goes through the board. And so that form is a version of the form that I need that's just gonna help me a lot. Um, so I don't have to fly a bunch of emails back and forth, but um, I, I'm happy to, to uh, provide the budget for you um, on a monthly basis or just send it out as materials with the agenda. But the only thing you have to submit is the, um, the request form if you've identified a project. Okay, and then follow up, um, is there a 10K allocated for the current fiscal year through June 30th? Yes. Okay, and, and just regarding the example you used for the Springs and the brochure, um, you said that they didn't need to have a partner, um, but why would they need a partner if they had funding in their account? So it's because, um, like I said in, in kind of the intro or middle section, you guys don't have a bank account. You're not a fiscal entity. We're, we're funding you. We, we have them. The county has the money. I, I don't have the money. You know, the, the county has it. Um, so the way that the brochures worked is that we put it on our credit card and mm. uh, the county credit card, essentially, the, the county credit card, and are going to pay that section of the bill from these, this fund that was allocated towards the Springs Mac for their expenses, right? And it's gonna come off of their budget. Something that's more complicated, so I'll come up with a super hypothetical example just to make it clear. And please do not, I, I'm just making it up right now. I'm not suggesting anything. So if you wanted to um, work, say with the Glen Allen Forum, just because they are, they are a nonprofit, um, to do something really similar to the little library. Um, this is just something we funded through these funds for the Glenelg Forum. So little library outside of the post office. So there's like a bulletin board and a little library and a bench. Um, and the MAC had a projects committee ad hoc and you worked together to get that done. We would need to give those funds to the Glenelg Forum to spend because we can't give them to you. You don't have a bank account. Um, if you did, you would have to do a lot of additional trainings and do a lot of additional FPPC forms because essentially you're appointed officials. Mm -hmm. And the rules on government officials, even though you, you all are like a low level of a government official, the rules around gifts and funds and declarations are thick and complicated. So um, I know the process sounds overly complex, but it's really saving you guys a lot of issues, um, mm -hmm. uh, if that makes sense. And, and if there's a specific pr proposal on the table, I'm happy to get more into it. It's really hard to make up hypo hypotheticals, honestly. And one final question. Um, I noticed several nonprofits in the Valley that get funding, some at most at 10K or many above, um, or a few, I should say. Um, where does the Glen Ellen Forum fall in that? Are they actually funded through this fund or through separate funds or do they get anything from the county? They have, um, they don't regularly. So like, kind of like this program that I'm, that I'm describing or this, this process, um, they can apply for funds. So we gave a, like the, the Jim Berkland Bridge that was lit, right? We, we funded that. It, it wasn't out of these funds. It was about, I was out of slightly different funds that, the distinction isn't really important. Um, honestly, we, we donated about, I think it was $1,000 towards that. Um, the tourism impact funds that we were discussing tonight have a larger balance, so they're a little more flexible. Um, and we have given the Glen Ellen Forum tourism impact funds, but it was only for that project I was describing. Um, that's the only time in my, in my tenure here, um, because that was a, that was a project that um, they brought to us that, that we thought was, a community benefit 
But that process, I would say, probably took about six months um, from the beginnings of working on the application to when it was actually built. So it's not a fast process. Thank you so much. Appreciate your uh, presentation and your, uh, your responses. Any other uh, questions or comments from council members? And I think we need to take a public comment. Is that right, Ariel? It is, and we have one member of the public left. Um, <laughs> so uh, if a uh, member of the public, if you would like to make public comment, please raise your hand. And I'm not seeing a hand raised. Okay, well then, um, Thanks everyone and thank you Ariel for that presentation and, and all your expertise. Um, let's move on to the reports and announcements from council members. Um, council member Dickey, do you have anything to report for the uh, Citizens Advisory Council? Um, no, we haven't had any meetings um, since our last um, MAC meeting. Um, I am on the ad hoc committee for winery events I encourage anybody who's interested in receiving the preliminary guidelines that have been proposed to, by, the, by the shareholders group to um, contact me. Um, I think it's really important that everybody see what's in this package. Um, and I'll leave it at that. <laughs> but I think, um, I think it's valuable exercise considering what we're doing here as a MAC to understand uh, what's going on in the broader world that may have an impact on our community. All right, thank you, Council Member Dickey. And um, let's see, um, Council Member Dowling, any uh, news from the Glen Ellen Forum? Uh, we, uh, as Glen Ellen Forum takes January off for our monthly meetings, um, but we do want to uh, express our appreciation for the county and the funds that they donated toward getting the Jim Brooklyn Bridge lit, because that, that was just a really wonderful thing for everyone. Um, I do want to share with our committee or our council that it was extremely, extremely difficult working with the state um, and that it, it is not an option to use SDC facilities um, next year to get our electricity. We just, we got in there by like me personally putting forward my assets and everything else to indemnify the state of California. So um, we, we can't do that in the future. And so we're looking forward to Leslie's idea, which she gave me a statement to read, but fortunately she was able to be here tonight of that we would really love to just drop a line from PG&E and fund that. And the Glen Ellen Forum would be happy to pay for the electricity as we use it. Um, so that would be an option for next year. All right, thank you, Council Member Dowling. And, um, you know, just a, a little thought, um, you know, when we rebuilt our house, we put in an, an ADU, an accessory dwelling unit, and we, we put a, um, rather than going through and getting a, whatever it would be, a ten or $15,000 payment to pg &E to put it as a separate uh, housing unit, we just had a, a meter put on the side of our house that our contractor hooked up that shows how much electricity is actually going into our house. And then it's a little complicated, but the anyway, you can, for a much cheaper amount, we could actually probably meter the electricity going into the Christmas lights. And then, you know, forum could pay that back or just a thought on that. Yeah. Um, let's see, any other um, reports from community organizations or things happening in the community? Yeah, Council Member Handron. So on Friday, there was the Sonoma Valley um, Latinx COVID meeting. And a lot of the information shared was stuff that's readily available on the, um, the county website. And also um, the city of Sonoma has a website with information. It was about the shelter in place orders, the vaccine schedule and what sort of testing is available. And I, after the meeting, I received an email um, for the first time, an email with a bunch of different flyers and a copy of the presentations. And if anybody would like to, um, to receive those, I'd be happy to forward them along. Just let me know. Sure, I'd like to take a look. Yeah. Okay, I'll do. Thanks. 
And uh, uh, council, council member, you can just send this to me and then I can send them send them out. So maybe the, uh, anyone that wants to share stuff, just send it to me and I can send it out to everyone. Okay, great, thanks. Thanks, Ariel. Uh, any other announcements or news from the community that we should know about? All right, then I think we can move into um, consideration uh, for future agenda. Um, so one, one thing um, that we, we might eventually, um, in order to accommodate the um, publication schedule of the Kenwood Press, it would help to move our meeting to a different uh, week of the month, but it's a little bit complicated because, the, because of uh, Ariel's commitments and the you know the county's commitments at this point in time, but we might eventually move it. And I, I don't think I'm remembering all the details, but we might eventually move it to the uh, first or third week, and we can discuss that. If, but I'm not sure if it's willing to talk about it now. Um, Ariel, when do you think that there might be an opening to actually do that? Um, you know, I. I, I... I think we may be able to, if we agendize that for February, we can discuss it in February and kind of get people's, um, whether they can, which date works best for them, basically. Um, we can do that and I'd be happy to throw together a poll. And, and, and I should know more by the February meeting about when, that, when we might be able to actually do that. Um, but I, I don't think it hurts to have the conversation sooner rather than later. Yeah, Council Member Dowling. Yeah, our, our challenge is we, we really want to inform the community about both the upcoming meeting and encouraging them to attend, as well as here's what happened in the meeting and, and here's how it affects you. But today we were proofreading sending the printer, hopefully by 2 p.m. It went at 520, but we, so we aren't able to cover this meeting. And then when we remind people, hey, the meeting's coming up, it's not relevant because it's so far in advance of when the next meeting is. So right now, I think we're, we're still in our forming stage and when we're ready, and it doesn't have to be February, not even March, but at some point, it'd be great to move the meeting back a week or forward a week so that we can both report on the results as well as get people excited about attending the next meeting so we can in, improve our community involvement. Sounds great. Yeah, I, I would totally support that. If we're the voice of the community, then the Kenwood Press is, is our conduit to, to be the voice. I mean, Kenwood Press already is the voice in a lot of ways, as, as well as other organizations. But um, so, uh, I mean, I, I would I would say we could, well, we could put that as a possible agenda item for next month is uh, just talk about uh, what would be the best week of the month to hold these meetings. Um, any other thoughts on uh, items for next month? Yeah, Vice Chair Doss. This is sort of a thought. Um, I'm wondering if uh, Council Member Newhouser would consider convening the emergency preparedness ad hoc. Funny, I was gonna ask you the same thing. <laughs> Um, yeah, certainly uh, we could do that. I was, it's, it's funny you should mention that. I was going to suggest that we go ahead and put on the max agenda that the ad hoc committees report back, but I think we already have a slot for that. As you mentioned earlier, Arthur, about having that all fall under community reporting. Yeah, I'm good with that. Yeah. Okay. Um, I will volunteer to convene the outreach committee unless somebody else is dying to do it. Okay, I'll be the convener and um, let's see, the other one is the- uh, Traffic safety. Emergency, or no, the, is traffic and safety, yeah. Any, any, Council Member Eagles? I'll convene, I have a Zoom link too. And that, is that a problem to use my Zoom link, Ariel, if I have one? Oh, not at all, please, please do okay. that. Less, less than I have to do, I love it, yes. Well, well, I don't know if the minutes will be out yet. Will my committee members, well, can we just confirm committees? Who else is on the traffic? Um, Angela and Jeff, thank, thanks guys. I can also, um, I can send to the, to the membership, um, since it was shared on the screen, um, I can send the finalized list just so you all know who your, who your others are. Um, I can send that out probably tomorrow, just, just so, so everyone knows who they're, 
to their ad hocus. Great. Arthur, I have a Great. Zoom link as well. I have a Zoom account, so I can okay. use my Zoom, my Zoom account for our, uh, our our committee. Okay, that's easy. I do as well. Great. Okay, I'm the I'm the odd man out, but that's no problem. That's great. Thing. Thanks for volunteering. I'll let, I'll let Vicky do it. <laughs> so I, I'm going to aim to convene within the next uh, week or ten days. I'll I'll send an email out tomorrow, but that's that's my intention. Just so you guys know. Um, is there um, thinking of are there any presentations that people would like to hear from the county, from um, you know, agencies or, yeah, uh, Council Member Dally. I'm I'm interested. I I read someplace that there was going to be a census of the houseless in the community in February, and I would be interested in the specifics on our areas in in Glen Ellen and Kenwood of the results of that census. So with that, uh, if that's happening in February, it sounds like it would. Probably I'm, not, I'm not sure if that's accurate. I may have misread something, but. And it, I, I don't know if Supervisor Gordon wants to speak to that. It is, it does happen in February. Um, it takes quite some time to get the results out. Um, I think we just got last year's results like a couple months ago. Um, it takes a long time to compile the data, but um, you know, I, that, I, I just wrote it down. So um, we can certainly look at that, um, have someone come in and talk about that. There, there is a little community. Um, in, in this area, so it's certainly worth and, it. And let me just add that normally it's January when we have our homeless uh, point in time count and we ask for volunteers from the community to help uh, interview folks. They know wh where um, folks are camping out and uh, we have training and I have not received any information yet about when that uh, point in time count would occur. Last year, we moved it from January to February because of the location of and the placement of folks at Los Coast Village and the clearing of the Joe Redota Trail. So we needed the population to somewhat settle down before we took that census count. If the results of that, it sometimes takes surprisingly five to six months to actually compile the data from the uh, count to get the demographic data and the trends. And in fact, it was just not that long ago that we received the information from last February. So um, the physical count happens early in the year, January or February, and then the results of that are then released September or October, August, September, October. So we might, um, and it's one of the points of challenges for the county um, in our infinite wisdom, we combine the function of the Community Development Commission with health services for, because there was such a strong connection uh, with serving the needs of the homeless population with mental health services. And as you might imagine, Director Robinson of Health Services is like hair on fire kind of a person at the moment, uh, trying to deal with vaccinations and COVID testing and hiring a zillion people across uh, the county to manage some of this. So uh, now is not a good time to have a conversation with Director Robinson. But uh, also just to let you know, we've hired a consultant to do an evaluation of the Community Development Commission. They have two traditional functions. One is homeless services and providing funding for providers of homeless services and the creation of housing and making the decisions uh, which projects to help subsidize um, uh, to move forward in building affordable housing projects, as well as the administration of the housing authority. We, uh, a consultant is reviewing the operation of this key department and will come in, be coming forward in April to make some recommendations on how we might organize or reorganize the work. So it's like this whirling dervish of activity around housing, homelessness, health services, and um, more information than you ever wanted to know, but there it is. <laughs> Yeah, I would be interested in uh, in learning more about uh, just how uh, census data gets used by the county, and maybe even getting a uh, like a snapshot or whatever. Whoever deals with that, the county is 
I don't know if it's the same people you're talking about or just like a, um, like even just getting a demographic overview of the North Valley, say, okay, who are we? You know, um, uh, and and I think that's fine. We don't necessarily need to go to Director Rivera or Assistant Director Tina, uh, uh, Director Robinson or Assistant Director Tina Rivera. Michael Gauss of the Community Development Commission has been actively involved in this, and all of you could go onto the website of the CDC to get the specifics of the demographics for Sonoma Valley. Now. Um, it may not be broken down into what is actually happening in Kenwood and Glen Ellen. And so it, that, it, that information may not be readily available for the specifics of what's happening. But also to let you know, we do have a, a Sonoma Valley Homeless Task Force that has been meeting. Um, well, it's I started it a couple of years ago and now it is meeting to talk about the need for a homeless shelter, uh, where it might be located and what its function might be. And I think there had been, um, Catherine um, had been uh, involved in that for a while. And I don't know that we have someone from Glen Ellen yet. If you know of someone, and I don't know whether Catherine um, is still involved, but if you want to have a member from the MAC or from Glen Ellen be a part of those discussions, let me know and we can arrange for that. Okay, thank you, Supervisor Gorin. Um, any other thoughts on uh, agenda for next time? Yeah, Council Member Newhauser. Uh, since there is a continued interest in the triangle, the Bermuda black hole. Um, it would be, it might be helpful to have someone from uh, the, uh, what is it, the roads department um, to talk about what the, um, you know, the limitations and opportunities are for doing something with that, uh, just to help you know, move or show some response to this request that has been presented twice to us now. I would support that, yeah. And we may have to figure out the appropriate person to address the specifics of the triangle rather than Johannes Hovertz, um, the head of transportation public works. If you really just wanna focus on the triangle, it might be general services. If you want to get an overview of what TPW actually does, uh, then it might be Johannes. And I think Johannes has been part of those discussions with the community on the triangle. Yeah, well, we'll think about, yeah, it would be interesting to get an overview. I would. Uh... And another thought on that, if I may, um, since this is part of um, the I guess this would fall under um, traffic safety, perhaps. I don't know. It's funny because it's you know we don't we don't really have a subcommittee now for um, you know for projects. Um, but I was I was wondering if that's something that could be addressed by the subcommittee, um, and and then meet with someone from the county or talk on the phone or whatever it takes, and then bring that back. So there's two options here, obviously, is one is to have the subcommittee deal with it or to have the um, have a general presentation for the uh, for the whole Mac. Anybody have and any a, preferences? Yeah, go ahead. A, a suggestion might be that um, you may have a specific interest in the triangle. Sorry, I called it the Bermuda Triangle. It was just an inside joke. Um, but uh, you might want to have, if in fact, uh, traffic and safety and, and general conditions in the village of Glen Ellen or Vet Glen Ellen and Kenwood, you may want to have someone from TPW just to give you a broad overview of all the functions that they have and what they would do and receive some input or create a discussion uh, session from you on some ideas on how you might want to see this move forward uh, with the county or or as an ad hoc committee. 
Thank you, Supervisor. And um, just a, a point of clarification, uh, as I understand it, you know, we've got these three ad hoc committees, but it doesn't mean that somebody couldn't come to us with a project that's completely outside of the ad hocs, but it's still within our purview. And we could we could discuss it as a MAC and even say, sure, we'll, we'll put $3,000 toward that project because we like the idea and we think it benefits the community. Is that correct? I think that's true, but um, for efficiency, you may want to appoint uh, another ad hoc specifically for that project so that the details of the project can be worked out, whether it has county or community input, uh, mm -hmm. and then bring back the details uh, for you to say yay or nay, or how about um, it's just an expedient way of moving forward. Yeah, I understand. Any other items for the agenda? Okay, well, um, Vice Chair Das and Ariel and I will be meeting in, at some point. We don't have a meeting set and we'll, we'll set the agenda, but we'll take all this under advisement. And, um, and um, yeah, it's great to, great to get started, get, great to have the ad hocs underway. That, that feels like a big step, but I, I think we're, I'm understanding why the gears of government work so slowly, but I think we're too making pretty good progress. <laughs> and the ad hocs can actually, you know, act a little more uh, fluidly, um, especially the, the yoga ad hoc. Looking forward to that one. Um, <laughs> all right, well, um, do I have a resolution to adjourn or a, a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right, seconded by Councilmember Eagles. Second. All those, all those in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, the meeting is officially adjourned at 7.37 p.m. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. Good night. That was good. <laughs>